I started Staple in 97, I was hand silk screening every Staple shirt out of Parsons School of Design. There was a silk screen lab on the fourth floor and I would break in because they didn't let you print on shirts, you know, a lot of shirts out of Parsons. So I would go in after hours, leaving the silk screen lab window unlocked. And I would literally crawl through the window with a pillowcase full of shirts and silk screen through like, a, I had my own sweatshop going all night long. And every shirt that was ordered, if you have an early staple shirt from 97, I fucking hand printed that shirt. My roommate sewed the label on because I wasn't really good at sewing. So my roommate would sew the label on. Uh, it was crazy. I mean, like, and as the order started to get bigger, and when I say bigger, I mean like 40 pieces. Hip hop is probably 50% or more of the reason why Staple even exists. The, the music that was happening then was so inspirational to me. It just fed my whole psyche, you know. The thing is, though, hip hop fashion at the time was really dominated by like the FUBU, Rock Aware, Pelly Pelly, you know, Carl Kanai, Cross Colors. Uh, that was really dominating hip-hop fashion. I was really into hip-hop music all the time, but I couldn't rock that fashion. Like, so to me, there was a disconnect between hip-hop fashion and the hip-hop music. Um, and it's probably because I was more into like a progressive, conscious hip-hop. Like I was going to like every Root show, every Common show, every Erica Badu show, Mos and Quali. Like I was doing all of that sort of real you know, thought-provoking, conscious hip-hop. And then when you listen to that music, it doesn't necessarily translate to like a, a FUBU shirt, like that has a big FB on your chest, you know? So I was like, man, I wish I want to create a brand that takes the inspiration from that level of hip-hop, but then translates it into fashion. And that's why I, I made Staple. And Staple, the name actually even came from the idea that Staple is like a raw essential element that you can't really live without. Um, whereas I saw the bling and the sort of big oversized logos as like unnecessary and over the top, Staple was gonna be something that just relied on the raw essential elements, kind of relating to the raw essential elements of hip hop as well. And so that's where the name at Staple actually came from. With the amount of shoes that we've designed in the past, both collaboratively as well as non-collaboratively. So we've done a lot of shoes that people don't even know that we've done. This bad boy is probably the one that started it all. Um, this is the Nike Pigeon Dunk uh, SB. Um, and this is the first time that we put uh, the pigeon on a shoe. Um, and it was really at the height of when, you know, SB Dunks were really, really on fire. Like everyone really wanted to get a pair of Dunks in general on their feet. And when we dropped these, it just created like mayhem, you know, really. I mean, we dropped it at Reed Space. This is the, uh, the New York Post cover the following day where a sneaker riot broke out. Um, and I mean, there's mad videos and commentary on this. You can look it up yourselves. It's in the Brooklyn Museum right now as part of their, their sneaker exhibition. So this one really set a bar in sneaker history. So Staple was already out and a thing. And somebody from the promotions department at Raucous was like, you know, we have this label called Raucous and we want to get merch going for our brand. We want to get like DJ bags, t-shirts, hoodies to sell at shows, but we don't know how to do that. And so they asked me to come on and help them with the merchandising. And it was a dream come true to be able to get behind those doors and actually see how Raucous operated. And I did like Black Star album, Quali, Most Def's album, Common 1999, Spinna. The first time Eminem appeared on record was on a DJ Spinna album. And I did that album. So um, Gangstar, there's a lot of like uh, music heritage that came out of that era too. It was a real blessing to work under the, you know, with those people. My first, my first staple ad campaign uh, was a picture of Mos in the elevator at Raucous. And it was literally like, I asked him, do you want this jacket? He put it on, he loved it. I took a picture in the elevator, not even thinking like this is gonna be for an ad. I was just like, take a picture in the elevator. And then, you know, I showed it to him. I was like, do you mind if we use it as an ad? He's like, of course, it's awesome. That would never happen today. We've never done a focus group. We've never done any trend research or like consulted anyone to see if like, is this on target for next year? Like we just believe in what we do. And like, if we feel like we're gonna rock it, it usually works out right. Um, and I think also the other thing that's happened in the past couple of decades is it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy where like now it's like because we're doing it, maybe that is the trend. So other buyers and other stores are like, oh shit, Staples doing, digital camo next year like maybe that's gonna be a thing you know what I mean so like now they look to us so it's kind of like but we're literally still also like in the dark but because we feel like we want to do it we just do it and maybe it becomes trendy you know our brand has been growing in the past three years a ton 
And I think a lot of it is responsible because of hip hop culture. Um, I think the, the average everyday hip hop consumer has gotten way smarter and more sophisticated with their purchases, you know. And I credit that fully to the Pharrells and Kanye West of the world who opened up the mind of the average hip hop guy to be like, yo, it's not just about, you know, t-shirt and kicks, like understand fabrication, understand a designer or a fashion show and like, you know, a fashion photography and a lookbook. Like, and now it's crazy. These kids now, they know the ins and outs of everything that has to do with a fashion brand. So I think a brand like Staple who has had this long heritage in underground street culture is perfect for any kid who wants to sink their teeth into a story.